Well, it's been around for 50 years, talking about, again, the birth control pill, and it has come a long way since it was first introduced in the 60s. Dr. Teresa Knight with Women's Health Specialist back to talk about some of the changes and the uses over the years. Good to see you again. Very nice to see you. Happy Mother's Day Happy to you. Happy Mother's Day to you. Uh, it has changed a great deal. 12 million, let me get the figures right, 12 million U.S. women are using the pill. That's a lot of women. Is that up or down? Do we know? You know, it's it's got to be up. I mm -hmm. can only imagine it's, it, it's got to be up. Um, I think that more often than not, women have at least been on the pill at some point um, for various reasons. Uh, you know, now less and less, not for contraception. We see a lot of women now who want to use it for cycle control or for hormonal control. And it has changed over the years. The pill itself has changed. Oh my gosh, you know, the, the dosages that we consider now to be high dose mm -hmm. are now less than half of what they were when they first came out. So we started off at a 50, you know, think of 50 years ago, a 50 microgram pill, and now we're down to 20 micrograms. And, you know, the pill is not just in pill form anymore. We have a lot of people who are using the same hormones, now in the form of a patch or even a ring that you place in the vagina. Now that is, that, now that one we'll talk about in a second, but it, what we've learned about it over the years, which is kind of frightening to think about, that we didn't know everything we needed to know about the pill. What, what have we learned about it in 50 oh, years? Oh gosh, well we've learned that um, by taking a pill that regulates the cycle that we can actually get rid of some of the things that we don't like so much about our mm -hmm. monthly visitor. Um, for example, the horrible cramps, uh, right. we can reduce that by using the pill. Um, the, the amount and length of bleeding can be reduced. Uh, acne, any of those things that we notice come on with our cycle. The, the uh, bad mood swings, the acne, um, those things we can actually change change by using a birth control pill. Dr. Knight, are women taking it to try to lose weight? Well, actually they are. You know, and and does funny. it work? It does. And here's the thing is that you know, a lot of, of young girls who are interested in starting the pill, the first thing they'll say to me is, does this thing make me fat? And the answer is no. They've actually done studies looking at 16-year-old girls who have been on the pill and 16 girls who have not been on the pill. And guess what? When you're 26, you weigh more than when you're 16. Well, yeah. So, um, and when you're 46 or 48, you... <laughs> hey, yeah. don't go there. <laughs> So um, what we found is that girls who have hormone imbalances, so girls who have um, certain types of imbalances like polycystic ovarian system, uh, syndrome, and that's a story for another day, can get uh, growth of ovarian cysts and they can get other problems like insulin resistance or diabetes, mm -hmm. high cholesterol, weight gain, bad acne, and hair growth on the face. Wow. And by using the pill, we can reverse all of those things. And before we let you go, our attitude about it has certainly changed. Hasn't absolutely, it? absolutely. And I think because we have so many uses other than just for birth control, and then the ability to control um, our cycles allows us to do so much more in, in life, not just about having children and when we have children, but also about when we're doomed to be uh, having our cycle. <laughs> doomed to be having our cycle. <laughs> and you mentioned the, the ring. We're talking about the, the pill itself, but the ring is contraception as well. It is. And so, in this uh, plastic ring are the same hormones that we would put normally in a birth control pill. Um, and they are released by the warmth of the vagina and the, the mucosa of the vagina then absorbs that just like you would absorb it through your digestive system. Um, and you're able to get a continuous dose of pill, of, of the same hormones that would be in the pill. The benefit of that ring is that you don't have to worry about taking a pill every day. And some girls have a hard time remembering to do that. Sure, some adults, right. Exactly. And you able to avoid some of the side effects of the pill that some people have like headaches, stomach aches, those things that you get with those little spikes and, and drops in, in the hormone. And I seem to recall in my 20s and 30s that women were told it, take it for a certain amount of time. You don't take it for 20 years. You need to take a break from it. Is that still true? Well, actually, there's a huge debate about that that's ongoing. But I can tell you that the largest study that they've done, again, in, in, with young girls, involving 40,000 young girls now, um, showed that there was not an increased risk of breast cancer. There was actually a decreased risk of ovarian, uterine, and colon cancer and that there was no increased rates of, of infertility later on in life. Okay. Now, if you wait to get off the pill until you're 40, you're going to have some infertility right. issues. Right, which, yeah, not necessarily <laughs> about the pill. <laughs> right, uh, but there was okay. no infertility once you got off the pill. The other thing that we're finding is that the pill originally was designed to have a period each month so that you could trust that the pill was working. You knew that you weren't pregnant.
But we now know that it, you don't need to have a monthly menstrual cycle. Some women and, just shouted hallelujah and are planning parties. Yeah. You don't have to have a period every month. Dr. Yeah. Knight, as always, thank you very much thank for the you. information. Thank Matt? You. Oh, Carol, the conversation continues here. There is one group of sexually active adults who aren't using any kind of birth control, and that's leading to a growing problem, the faster spread of STDs.